Okay. So I'm trying to figure out what is the cheapest way to obtain any given character. So for this test, I'm going to use uh, Santa Mario as an example. So if we were to go to Fire, and if we were to go to Details, this will give you details on the odds of obtaining any given, given character. But obviously we're going to pick Mario as our given character. And Mario Santa at the top of the screen here does 1%. So in order to simulate it, since 1% is 1 in 100, I'm going to go to a random number generator, and I will make it pick any given number between 1 and 100. So I'll just click stop, and it would give me 3, so to say. So I go there, write a 3. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, so I'm go through here, do 10 random numbers. I'm going to go through here, 10 more random numbers. And for last, third time, 10 more random numbers. And then I'm going to take those three numbers, so let's say this is a 3, this is a 10, and this is a 5, or 50. Um, and then I'm going to add those up, divide them by 3, and that will give me the average for this row. And since one, and then you'd want to pick, you would want to, what the goal is, is to try to figure out if you'd want to pull one at a time via five rubies or 10 at a time, 45 rubies. Initially, you'd think 45 rubies for 10 pulls is cheaper, so that's definitely the way to go. I'm just trying to figure out if that is correct. So, yeah, so we got our first number, I'm going to go our second number. 35, 64, 70, and, th and this is um, essentially what number Mario Santa is. So if we were to pull three times, we would get him. Or 35 times, he'd be the 35th player in that uh, virtual card deck of Mario Kart players, gliders, and carts. So it'd be the 70th one, 70th one. And all we're trying to worry about is where he is in the, in the virtual deck. Two. 75. 70. 50. I'm basically just trying to figure out who's going to pay more and what the best strategy is to pay the least for any certain character. Okay, so that's the first 10 random numbers, and then I'm just going to go do the same thing up here. 30, 35, 4, 33, and I'm just going to add these up and divide them by 10, or sorry, divide them by 3. Uh, off camera, and you can check the math if you really feel like it. I'm not trying to cheat, I'm not trying to pr prove my point, I'm just trying to do actual math because several people claim they know the best way, but don't actually check it out with math. Which is fine because I initially thought one way was definitely better, and you should stick to one type of pole, either 10 pole or 1 pole, which I don't think I'm correct if my uh, guess is correct. Okay, so that's all of our random numbers. We have 30 random numbers there. So if I were to go over to my calculator, I'll just do the first one with you guys, and I'll write them, the averages down on a separate thing here. Okay, so 3 plus 30 plus 74 would get us uh, 107. And since we did that, we had three different numbers out, divided by 3. And that would give us our average of 35 point, and a bunch of 6s. 35 point six six so that was actually a very low 
uh, one. So this could have been anywhere from 100 to one uh, average. So that's a very low average. And the lower the number, the faster we would get our character. And so for the person that did one poll, so five rubies, you know, just one poll, they would have to spend 35 0.6, which we're going to round that up to 36. So 36 uh, poles, and we have to times that by 5 later. And the 10 pole person would have to do, they can't spend 35, they'd have to spend 40, because it would be in multiple of 10. So that'd be 40. So right away, you can see one of them spent more, but also the 10 pole person spent less on the rubies, because they got 45. For, uh, or sorry, this, yeah, they got 45 rubies and 10 poles rather than 5 rubies and 1 pole. So they, they saved 5 rubies. But did saving that 5 rubies actually help them? I don't know. So now I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to take, so 36 times. So that's, uh, he, did, he did 36 poles of one singular pole. One singular pole cost him 5 rubies. So equal 180 rubies. So 180 over. So the first person got 180. Uh, spent 180 rubies. And then clear. Next person did. Uh, got it on the 40th one. Or yeah, sorry, I had to do 40 poles. So 40 poles. Nope, sorry. 10 rubies times no 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 <laughs> okay it's getting difficult here i don't know why i'm blinking right now okay so 10 poles costed them 45 so 45 rubies times 10 times be 450 nope wrong math why am i being I'm blinking right now. Okay. So 10 poles. So, okay, now he did four poles of 10 times 45. Sorry. Okay, 180. Wow. That is very weird. So that's probably not going to be average. But for that one, that was a tie. So... I'm going to do all the rest of them off camera, and you can check my math if you really feel like it. But this one, they spent the exact same amount of rubies. But if you actually pay attention, this one technically, the 10 pole did get four more characters, gliders, or carts. So technically the 10 pole won, but since we were taken out of the equation and only caring about Santa Mario, they tied. Okay, so I'm going to do the ne next bit off camera, and I'll... Get back to you when it's done. Okay, so I'm going to do this last one with you also. So I messed up up here. I put 40 instead of 4. Because you're supposed to put the number of poles, not the amount of characters, cards, or gliders you got. So you just put 4 poles. Because you have 4 poles of 10 to get his 40 characters. So with this bottom one, we take the person that did single poles. He did 74 single poles times... 5 rubies per pole would equal 370. So 370 compared to the guy that did 10 poles, did he had to do, or sorry, the guy that did 10 poles, he had to pull 8 different times, but his ruby cost was 45 per pole, so 360. Okay, so you could see here are the. Um, if you compare the two, I'll zoom up there for you. Oop, a little too much. Hundred and eighty to hundred and eighty, hundred and eighty to hundred and seventy, three hundred fifteen to three hundred fifteen, two sixty to two seventy, hundred and thirty to hundred thirty five. So the lowest number, the lower number is the better one. That's the amount of rubies they spent. Um 350 to 315, 380, 360, 335, 315, 245, 225, 
370, 360. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of the person that did one poll, one poll at a time for five rubies each. Add up all their first, all their numbers of how many rubies they spent trying to get the character, or until they got the character. Um, add all those up, and then I'm going to divide them by 10 to get the average. So we get the average that he spent trying to get them, then we get the average that the 10 poll person got, or the uh, 10 poll person spent trying to get Santa Mario or any high-end spotlight character, any character with 1%. And obviously you can adjust the formula to change. So if it's 1%, you'd want to have 100 different possibilities, so any number between 1 and 100 here. But if it's a 5%, you'd have any number between 1 and 20. And then all these numbers would be between 1 and 20. Then you just average them off, which would be somewhere around 10-ish. Um, so anyways, I'm going to figure out which one did better in this particular or these particular games to see if you'd rather be the person that pulled 10 or the person that pulled 1. Okay, so I've added up all of the person that did one poll at a time for 5 rubies each. I've added up all of their numbers, so the 180 all the way down to the 370. I've added all those up, and I'm going to divide them by 10, since there's 10 different values here. So divide them by 10, and that should give you 274.5. So I'm actually just going to write 274.5, just to be more accurate. I could run that up to 275. But on average, the player who spent one ru or, sorry, five rubies at a time, pulling from one character at a time, spent 274 rubies. So now I'm going to do the math for the other one and see how much the guy who pulled 10 at a time, how many he spent. Okay, I'll see you when that's done. Okay, so again, I've just took in taken uh, the guy who pulled 10 character 10 poles at one time spent 45 rubies for 10 poles and all of his numbers up for each average uh, of how many times how many rubies he spent trying to get uh, in this case Santa Mario or any spotlight high-end spotlight character um, and I got this number here press equal so just add all these numbers up and then 260. 2,645 divided by 10 equal 264. So we have 264.5. And there is your answer. On average, a player that spends 10 rubies at a time rather than 5, or sorry, spends 45 rubies at a time rather then oop, 45 rubies at a time wins. So, 10 pull in this scenario, 1, and it saved this guy 10 rubies, which is kind of a lot when you take into effect how valuable rubies are in the game. So, in this particular game, it would have been smart to play as the person who chose to do 10 out of time. So now I want to figure out, I'm going to use this information here to figure out what had been the ulti ultimate uh, strategy. So is there a certain number? So if you were to stop uh, pulling 10, so you, if you were to pull 10 five times, so you get 50 characters, and then you start doing singles, would that be better, equal to, or less than either of these two? Uh, values here. So my hopes and my theory is that stopping at a number such as like 50, so doing 5 10 pulls and then stopping and then doing a bunch of single pulls until you get the character that you wanted, I think that would be the better way to do it. But I guess we'll see here in a second when I compile that math. Okay, so how am I to figure out the best strategy, or at least for this game, which I'm assuming will carry over to the average player's game in Mario Kart Tour. In order to get one particular character, uh, in this case, a 1% uh, odds of getting that character, all I'm going to do is I'm add up the average of these three runs here. So this is uh, 35, this is 33, this is 62, this is 51, 26, 70, 75, 66, 48, and 73. I'm going to add all those up. I'm going to divide them by 10, because that's how many inputs there are, and that's going to give me an average of the averages. And then I'm going to take that number, and then I'm going to 
see how many times 10 goes into it equally. So let's say the number is 60. Or sorry, the number is 65. So that means you'd want to do 6 poles of 10, and then stop doing 10 poles. And then you'd want to start doing your single poles for 5 rubies each. And then, you know, you do 5 poles, and then you don't spend extra. Hopefully. And that'd be the odds. Sorry, I'm going to add these numbers up, get back to you with the number, and then we'll figure out from there. I guess what I've done here is I've added up all the averages, and uh, that equals 542.9. Divide that by 10, obviously you just move the decimal. 54.29. Okay, so that is our Mario. So Mario is essentially the 45th card down, or the 40, or 54th, or 55th. Either way you look at it, it's around. 54, 55. So we'll take that number, we're going to divide it. We're going to see how many times we can get 10 out of it. This is the uh, this is the hybrid strategy. So, obviously you can fit 5. You can fit 5, 10 poles in there, right? So you'd want to do 5 times 10 poles, which would be, which one 10 pole is 45. So 5 times 45. So we'll do that math here. 45 equal 225. So 225 plus, okay, so see how we still got 4.29, so let's just round it up to 5 plus 5 plus, or sorry, 5 times 5 rubies per pole, because you're doing single poles, because you want to do as many as you can. So if this is, is if this is where Mario is, you'd want to do or this is the ultimate strategy, so wherever, wherever, if you don't know where Mario is, you'd want to do five, ten poles, and then do as many single poles as you need to. In this scenario, we'd only need to do five single poles. So five single poles times five rubies per pole would be 25. So 25, so 225 plus 25 would obviously be 250. So this is our hybrid. If we go over here, we actually write hybrid, which is the one where you do as many uh, 10 poles as possible until you get to 50, unless you already got them, of course. Uh, unless you got your Mario or whatever you're trying to pull for. So do as many 10 poles as possible. Or then if you still don't have him, then you'd go into single poles once you hit 50. Um, that would give you a number of 250. So you spent 250 rubies. R stands for rubies, obviously. Um, compared to our one pole, so the five rubies per uh, per pole. So one character per pole or one character cart glider, whatever. 274. So one pole is 274 274.5 which you can basically round that to 275 but I'm going to write it as it is uh, 264 would be the 10 pole 10 pole is 270 wait sorry that's opposite so the 10 pole this, nope, that's correct. My bad. Okay. <laughs> so the single pole is 274. So the one pole is 274. They spent, the person that pulls one time until they get their character. One time repeatedly, five rubies, five rubies, five rubies, will spend 274. The person that spends 45 rubies at once, or tries buying 10 characters at once, will end up spending 264. 4.5, which is basically 265. So, if you look at the math there, there's an obvious winner. If you want to spend the least amount of rubies, all these are R's, uh, well, it's obvious. You have to do the hybrid. And that will save you compared to, okay, so the let's do it, uh, Grade it as if it's like uh, an assignment or something. 
So Hybrid would be an A+. Because he did not spend that much, considering uh, all things considered. Uh, the next is 264, which is still a very decent amount to spend. That's not a lot. Or 265, basically. So he deserves a B, and then the one pole deserves a C, because he he did okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, so if, if you compare the hybrid approach to the ten pole or the one pole approach, hybrid wins. But hybrid wins compared to ten pole by how many? 250 rather than 264, so we got like four, 15, 15 less rubies compared to the second best. And compared to the other one, it's 25 less rubies. So you could essentially t save 25 rubies by taking this approach rather than the 10 pool. Or sorry, rather than the one pool. And you can save 15 rubies compared to the single pool. I think I said that right. Anyways. Obviously, hybrid is correct. I was correct. Um, feel free to check the math. Because I was trying to go fast, and I was camera. I was messing with the camera the whole time, and so it was not the easiest. But, yeah. That's our... I'll zoom out for you guys to... Uh, check the math there. But yeah, so you save a lot with the hybrid approach. Anyways, okay. Thanks for watching.